Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. So some of you asked me to make a tutorial on how to actually use my code, so I'm happy to do that here. So first of all, what do you need to use my code? Well, obviously you need the C files that are available on GitHub at this address here. So if you go there, it is possible to just download an archive with all the files, which will be probably the easiest to do. Then you will need a C compiler. And the good news is that actually, in many cases, you already have one on your machine. You may not be aware of it, but all or almost all uh, Unix type systems, such as Linux, actually, are written in C, and uh, so there's obviously a C comp uh, compiler present there. But also uh, Mac OS, since version 10, is actually written in uh, some version of BSD, which is a Unix-flavored system, so there's also a C compiler. For Windows, I'm not quite sure if there is one installed by default, but uh, it should be easy to just install some software that serves as a C compiler. And then you also need a bunch of libraries. So uh, most of the libraries I use are pretty standard in C, so they should already exist in your distribution. Uh, two libraries that are a bit special are OpenGL, which handles the graphics, and OpenMP that uh, accelerates computations. So these, you may have to install them. And it will depend on the type of operating system you're using. So I cannot give you a general way of doing it. I'm using a version of Linux. And there, the actually, when I wanted to compile, it just told me what to do to uh, add these libraries. And these libraries are free and open. So if you don't know how to do it, you should find the relevant information on websites uh, such that such as a Stack Exchange, for instance. So now, why am I using C and not another language? Well, there are three main reasons. The first one, maybe not the best, but uh, C is actually the language I'm most familiar with. It's a language I learned when I was a student before the first language I ever used was BASIC. That's not such a great language. And then I used Pascal. And actually, the transition from Pascal to C is quite easy. So at a fundamental level, the two languages are quite similar, though I believe C has uh, more options. Then C is a compiled language. So that makes it much faster. And uh, now <coughs> some of you may prefer interpreted languages such as Python. And I heard that it's actually possible to interface Python with some compiled C code. I never tried it, but that may be an option. And the last reason why I'm using C is that it's extremely stable. Actually, some of my old code on simulating billiards still has written in the preamble that I wrote this code in 1992, if you can believe it. And this old code still compiles all right. There are a few warnings because a few details in syntax have changed since then, but uh, uh, it is still working all right. So the language has been stable for many decades, and it is likely to, be me to remain stable for a lot of time still. Now, let us have a quick look at the code, the programs you find in uh, the distribution on GitHub. So there are many files, but here are the most important ones. So there's a number of programs I really use quite regularly and that I maintain the most. So uh, Particle Billiard is for simulations of non-interacting particles in some domain, what we call mathematical billiards. Then there are a number of codes for the simulation of the wave equation in two-dimensional domains. So the first I wrote is 
wave billiard. That is just a two-dimensional plot of the solution. Wave 3D is, allows for 3D plots of two-dimensional solutions, so using the third dimension as a, to indicate the wave height or wave energy or things like that, and more recently wave sphere that simulates the wave equation on the sphere. Then RDE uh, actually does quite a lot of things. So it allows you to simulate the heat equation. Also reaction diffusion equations such as the Allen Kahn equation or the rock paper scissors equation. I talk about in my tutorial on these reaction diffusion equations. Then also uh, various equations from fluid dynamics such as the incompressible or compressible Euler equation and uh, the shallow water equation. And it also allows you to simulate the Schrodinger equation. Then we have Leonard Jones, which allows to do all these simulations of interacting particles. So they typically interact with the Leonard Jones type potential. And I haven't used it recently, but it's kind of independent of the rest, the, is this code to simulate percolation systems. Now, uh, there are a few other programs which are either variants of some of these or some codes that I don't maintain as regularly and uh, which, uh, or which have been superseded by some of those above. So drop billiard and particle billiard, the particle pinball, are just variants of particle billiards with different initial conditions or some additional features to make statistics. Wave comparison allows you to compare to uh, the wave equation in two different domains. Wave energy plots the energy profile of the wave and mangrove uh, that is the simulations where you have actually obstacles that can move and that can uh, disappear after a while and regenerate. So that one I haven't used in quite a while, but I make sure that it still compiles. And Heat and Schrödinger are two uh, codes that are actually superseded by RDE, but I still keep them in the distribution, so heat for the heat equation and Schrödinger for Schrödinger's equation. And the other files in this distribution are auxiliary functions, so there are many uh, functions that are used by the main codes, and some of them are common to several of these codes. There are files containing global variables and definitions, and there are these markdown files, the .md files, that contain the parameter values of all my published simulations. All right, so now let's have a look at uh, one of these programs here. So maybe let me make the fonts a little bit larger. So here I have uh, Wave Billiard, so which allows to simulate the to the wave equation. So here there's a preamble that uh, you can ignore here. Uh, then here is a list of libraries I, I use. And here is the most important part that contains uh, a large number of constants that you can change to make different types of simulations. So let me, for as a first example, put the switch movie to zero. So uh, the code when I run it will not create a movie. And for the purpose of this simulation, let me change here the window height and width to something smaller so it will fit more easily on the screen. And I nx and ny are the dimensions of my simulation grid and for the purpose of this demonstration I'm going to set it quite small so the resolution will not be so great but it will be quite fast to simulate. Okay and for 
these values I will also use it's just to conserve the, the aspect ratio. So x min, x max, y min, y max are just the coordinates on the screen that define my domain. So now uh, the most important parameter here is the billiard domain. And the number here is something you find here in the, the global PDEs file. So it gives you the shape of the domain in which you simulate the equation. So let's say we want to do it in an ellipse. So ellipse has number one. So here I put number one. Then everything that comes after here I can ignore. Now uh, lambda is a parameter I always use for the main dimension of my domain. So for the ellipse it is the aspect ratio, so semi-major over semi-minor axis, and let us put it to 1.5. Now the others we can ignore here. They are specific to other domains. Now here there are physical parameters of the wave equation. These usually you don't need to change. So the most important is the current number that gives you the wave speed. And then uh, here are some options if you want to add some uh, oscillating sources or things like that. The boundary condition is not important for the ellipse. Okay, end steps. Uh, that will be the length of the simulation. Let me put it to 500. And NVID that I explain in more detail in my tutorial on simulating the wave equation, it's the number of integration steps I do per frame of the movie. So by increasing this NVID, you can make your movie faster, but it will take longer to simulate. So the other things here are not really important. These are parameters for the initial condition. Now here we have the type of plot. So let's start. So again, you have them in the global file here. So the plot types you have here. So the first zero is to just plot the amplitude. So let's keep that. And then here we have the color scheme. So the color schemes you have here. So when I started making these simulations, I used some version of JET, which is kind of a nice uh, rainbow type color scheme, but which has been criticized because it's not perceptually uniform. So meaning that Depending on the color, a certain patch of color will appear larger or smaller. So therefore I uh, introduced quite a lot of other schemes. Some of them are perceptually uniform, not all of them. But what I use quite a lot is uh, Turbo, which is kind of similar to a, a rainbow uh, color gradient, but it's not quite cyclic. and. Uh, it is often quite a bit nicer in the choice of colors. Uh, what I use a lot is Viridis, which has a gradient going from some dark blue to yellow uh, over some green tones. That is quite nice, and it is perceptually uniform. Magma and Inferno both go from black to some pale yellow, but uh, Inferno has a bit warmer colors and magma is a bit more pastel colored. Plasma goes from some deep purple to yellow through some kind of pink. Cividis is a bit similar to Viridis but with a gray instead of a green as an intermediate color. Parula is from MATLAB that goes from blue to yellow but uh, lighter colors than Viridis and Twilight is uh, I use quite a lot. It has some red and blue colors with white and purple in between and it is cyclic. So let us say that we take uh, Viridis here. So I put this switch to 11. Then here there are quite a lot of parameters controlling the, the colors. So 
It allows you to scale the colors in different way. For instance, if you increase slope, the colors will change faster in terms of the input. But then there's some fine tuning you can do with uh, all these, uh, these values here. And uh, what else? So all this is not so important. Okay, I can. Uh, this is to uh, introduce a, a bar with the color. So I let the switch. I leave it at one. And uh, that's about it. So right. So there's one more thing I need to do. That is uh, choose the initial state of the wave and this I haven't put in the constants because there are so many options so currently I have something where I just initialize with a flat wave but that's not what we want so let me comment this part out and let me put this and let's say I will start at point one zero so these are the positions of the circular wave and now let me compile the, the code. So I type in a, in a shell make wave billiard. And you see it compiles all right. There are a few warnings here and there due to the fact that one of the functions I took from somewhere that converts what's on the screen into TIFF files uses an old fashioned type of variable, this un32. I haven't tried yet, but it's probably enough to just replace it by an integer or something. So, okay, so now yeah, let me run the code. And so here we have our equation, our simulation of the wave in an ellipse. So it's quite low resolution because I've chosen to do so uh, for the sake of quickness of, of the simulation but so here you see it's it's even real time okay so let's also look at an example where I make a movie so for that I change the switch movie to one and uh, double movie I use a lot it means that I actually make two parts of a movie at the same time with two different representations, for instance, the wave height and the energy. So for that, I have to change here the plot type. So let's say we take the average energy. So that would be number three here. And uh, let's say I take Inferno as a color scheme for that. Then I compile again and I run the code and okay here you see the what happens for the wave energy and because the resolution is so low actually you have a lot of these artifacts coming from the simulation lattice but if you take a larger resolution these uh, will disappear so now we just wait for the code to finish and here we are so now I always move the files for the for these images into a, another folder so in this case it is called tiff wave so let us go there so you see here are the the files wave dot something dot tiff and then I actually have a comment to, uh, which is ffmpeg with some options that makes the movie and I've put that in a file called make movie so let's just look what it contains so it contains this command here ffmpeg with uh, okay the file names for the input the codec for the type of uh, video you want to compute to to render and the file name of the output so I just execute this command so here it is generating the movie and 
and here we are, so we can have a look at the movie. So for that I use, for instance, VLC. So I have to go to the right folder here, so TIFF WAVE. And so here you see the movie. That was the first part with the wave height, and here's the second part with the average wave energy. Alright, so maybe we want to try something else. So let the, let us change the shape of the domain. So let's see what we have here. So for instance, I have uh, the interior of a Julia of a Julia set, which is number sixteen here. So. Now I take 16 for the domain, and then let me take, so the parameters of the set are in, in some uh, global variables somewhere, I will just leave them uh, as they are, and maybe let me just change the, the color gradient to, uh, so I've kind of like twilight and maybe let's not make a movie now and so I compile my code again okay and now I see that my initial condition is not in the domain so I have to change my initial point so it is here, and maybe let me increase the resolution a little bit because this one was really not so great. It will be slower, but it will look nicer. So I put the same uh, simulation grid size as the window size. And here we have the simulation. It's actually still pretty fast at this resolution. All right, so uh, now you've seen a couple of examples of how to make these animations. For those who are interested, I can also give a few comments on the code. So a C file, you start reading from the end. So here is the main function. And it doesn't do a lot of things here. So the first comments here are there to create the, the window. So these are specific to uh, OpenGL. Then in it just initializes the the window, so that's one of the functions I've put in these uh, auxiliary files. And uh, yeah, and then here it starts the, the main loop with the option display, which is this function here. And this function doesn't do much either, so uh, I have here a few things that allow me to give the simulation time. So you see here it tells me when it started, when it finished. So I, I see that it took about uh, 15 seconds for the simulation. And it, uh, so it, 
looks at the starting time, it looks at the time when it has finished and it prints the time, and in between the important thing is animation here. So if we move up to animation, here it is, so that is the main part of, of this code. So it starts by initializing uh, a lot of things, uh, in particular Phi, Psi and TMP are fields to, to store the values of, uh, of the wave. And since they're usually quite large, I, I use some memory allocation here, which is uh, safer to do for large uh, arrays, uh, because so the code will uh, reserve some places in in the the memory for these variables, and you there's no risk of uh, having uh, problems with memory. Now, actually, in this code, I when I started doing this, I used two-dimensional arrays. So actually, these are arrays of arrays. And later on, actually, for the 3D versions, I moved to one-dimensional arrays because I was told it's a little bit faster. So at some point, I will probably adapt also the things I do here. Then here are functions that initialize different things that are used for specific types of boundaries. Uh, for instance, B domain equals D circles. D circles is actually a whole family of domains with circular obstacles. And you can choose whether the circular ob obstacles are, for instance, on a square grid or on a triangular grid or some, some other distribution. And so you have to initialize some uh, variables here. So this init circle config initializes the, the data. So the variable is called circles here. And similarly for polygonal domains. So there are a few more initializations like that. This part is not so important. Also, I initialize some arrays. If I, uh, for instance, use an index of refraction that is not constant, so different wave speeds. And uh, then here we've already seen uh, that is the initialization of my wave. And OK, this is just drawing things for first time. That's not really important here. And then here I have the main loop. So n steps is the number of frames of the movie. So i goes from 0 to n steps. I have the option of adding an initial time if I want to start the movie a bit later. And so in order to maybe I want my initial condition to reach the region where things happen. Okay, and then I have here some functions that uh, draw the wave depending on the resolution. And this NVID here, as I told you, uh, controls the speed of the simulation. So it's how many evolution steps you do between frames of the movie. So J goes from zero to this NVID, and then for each time step you evolve the wave. And then once this is done, I draw some other things like the, the color scheme and okay, most of this is commented out. It's because I sometimes add uh, an oscillating source and uh, I print maybe some parameters and then uh, this part here takes care of what happens if I have a, a second movie. So if I have this option double movie, it also draws things uh, with the, the second representation and the second color palette. And at the end, that is just the part that allows to fade the from uh, what you draw into black at, at the end of the movie. And if you do memory allocation, don't forget to free all the memory at the end. So here it's not so important because the code just executes this once. But it may be that at some day, maybe what I sometimes did is that 
instead of just doing this animation once, I did it several times with different parameter values. And then if you don't free the memory, you will quickly run into memory problems. So what else do we have? So the main thing here is the this evolve wave. And here that's one of these optimized versions I talked about in my tutorial on simulating the wave equation. So it starts with evolve wave half and it takes phi and psi, which are the waves at time, uh, the current time and the previous time and move it to a temporary variable. And then it cycles this. So there are three steps and that allows you to uh, save quite a lot of computation time because you at time n plus one, the wave will depend uh, on the wave at times n and n minus one, and you have to do parallel updates. But if you cycle through these three states, actually you don't have to move so much information around. And then uh, it calls this evolve wave half, which should actually be called evolve wave th uh, third. And what this does is this here, so okay, so here I initialize some tables that contain the wave speed and uh, possibly dissipation and uh, and so on. Though in the three D version, I actually move this to a to a variable which is in the animation uh, function, and then this pragma OMP here that is for mem for computation acceleration. So it uses this OMP uh, uh, library that tries to distribute things on uh, several cores if you have them in your computer. And what it does here, uh, as I explained on my tutorial on the wave equation is here I do the evolution in the bulk. So it updates my fields in the bulk and the bulk means that I'm not on the boundaries. So for the examples we've seen, it's not important because the boundaries of the simulation are actually uh, not in the domain that you simulate. But if you use simulations with periodic boundary conditions or absorbing boundary conditions, this is important. And then I do some specific cases on the boundary. So for the left boundary, I have this option of adding an oscillatory boundary condition. And then, well, here you see, depending on the boundary conditions, you do different things. And the same for the right boundary, for the top boundary, and for the bottom boundary. So this part is uh, a bit long because there are all these different boundaries, but it is helpful to accelerate the code because you minimize the number of if statements because you don't have to say at every time, am I on the boundary or not? So you just do everything you need to do in the bulk and then you do things separately for each boundary. All right, so this is it for this simulating the wave equation. My other codes are kind of similar, only the meaning of the different uh, constant uh, changes, of course. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks a lot of watching and hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye.